Tonight on Y News. Filipinos in Hong Kong urged to stay away from seven protest areas as the citywide strike continues. President Rodrigo Duterte to possibly discuss the West Philippine Sea dispute when he flies to Beijing again later this month. Senate panel supports appeals to increase the budget of the newly established Department of Housing and Urban Development. And newly appointed Acting Ag Agriculture Secretary William Dar vows to address food security issues in the country. And Tropical Storm Hanna maintains strength as it moves towards the west direction. Good evening. Pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong have launched a rare citywide strike crippling parts of the city as the semi-autonomous territory's chief executive, Carrie Lam, warned on Monday of the dangerous path the demonstrations are heading. Ferdi Petalio explains why. Protesters in Hong Kong have taken to the streets in an attempt to disrupt transport services ahead of a citywide strike later on Monday. There were delays of the mass transit railway as scaffolds broke out between commuters and activists who tried to stop trains leaving. At the airport, more than 200 flights were cancelled as authorities warned passengers about potential disruptions. Yeah, actually I flew here from Japan so early at 6.30 a.m. and I was informed at 3 a.m. that my flight from Hong Kong to Penang is cancelled due to some operational issue which I could not understand because it's just come on so sudden. It follows the ninth consecutive weekend of protests in Hong Kong. At a press conference on Monday, the city's leader Carrie Lam addressed the media for the first time in two weeks and warned again that the protests ripping the city are a challenge to China's sovereignty and pushing it to the verge of an extremely dangerous situation. Embattled Lam remained defiant as she rejected calls from protesters for her to resign and said the government would be resolute in maintaining law and order. She warned the protests were putting the Asian Financial Center on the path of no return and had hurt the city's economy. The great majority of Hong Kong people are now in a state of great anxiety. Some of them do not know whether they could still take some forms of public transport, while others are right now being blocked on the way to work. The government will be resolute in maintaining law and order in Hong Kong and restoring confidence. The Chinese-controlled city has been blocked by months of protests that began against an extradition bill that would have allowed people to be sent to mainland China for trial and have since evolved into a broader backlash against the government. Ferdi Petalio, UNTV News and Rescue, Hong Kong. An overseas Filipino worker was arrested in Mongkok, Hong Kong on Saturday for allegedly joining the protest. The Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong, meanwhile, warns Filipinos not to wear black or white shirts in public. From Hong Kong, Ferdi Petalia is back to tell us why live. Ferdi, go ahead. Good evening, Diego. The Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong advises Filipinos in the autonomous territory to keep safe and avoid areas where massive protests are set. Specifically, these areas include the Tamar Park, Admiralty, Shat in Town Hall Plaza, Chun Moon Park, Discovery Park, Chun Moon, Chun Moon uh, Won Tai Sin Square, Mac uh, Pearson Playground, Mong Kok, and Kuk Fuk Football Park, Taipo. The Consulate General also reminds Filipinos not to wear black or white shirts as these colors are associated with the conflicting parties involved in detention. A family or a Filipino who has just passing through a protest uh, area while wearing the black shirt was arrested Saturday night for aller allegedly participating in a protest at the North Point District. However, the Filipino who works as a dancer at 
Hong Kong Disneyland denies involvement in the demonstration, saying he was just out to buy food when the police chase of protesters happened. The OFW is detained at the North Point Police Station and later went through a routine checkup while, uh, where he was joined by officers from the Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong. The Philippine Consulate General has coordinated with the police in Hong Kong and at least two pro bono Hong Kong lawyers are assisting the arrested Filipino. The case is uh, still under investigation and no charges have been filed against the Filipino yet. Meanwhile, the consulate office closed its operations today due to the ongoing strike and disruptions in transport services. The consulate office says all passport appointments will be accommodated on Tuesday and in the succeeding days. Jago? All right. Uh, thank you yeah. very much, uh, Ferdy Petalio. That is Ferdy Petalio reporting live from Hong Kong. <music> President Rodrigo Duterte is set to visit China for the fifth time. It is possible the two leaders will discuss the West Philippine Sea issue. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Malacanang confirms President Rodrigo Duterte will visit China again before August ends. Presidential spokesperson and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Secretary Salvador Panelo says there's no date yet for the Chief Executive's working visit. He says the issue on the West Philippine Sea may be in the agenda. And it refers to discussion with the visited country relative to issues that affect both issues that will benefit both countries issues of conflict <clears throat> issues of cooperation issues of support especially with respect to terrorism to fighting drugs to cultural exchanges, people to people, and financing too. The former top special aide of the president and current Senator Bongo said President Duterte may fly to China in the last week of the month. It is also possible the president will watch the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2019 hosted by Beijing from August 31 to September 15, 2019 in which Gilas Pilipinas will compete. It can be noted President Duterte first visited Beijing two years ago. He attended a Belt and Road Forum in 2017 and 2019 and was present in a BOA Forum for Asia last year. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. The newly established Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development may face challenges this year. There is a huge housing gap in the country, but the department has only a small budget. Neil Maribohok will tell us why. Some senators appealed to various government agencies to adjust the rates of the government's housing program for the benefit of poor Filipino families. This for the government to easily resolve the housing gap in the country. But according to Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council, adjusting the cost of housing in its lowest rates may have repercussions. One of the better <coughs> solutions is rental housing because if we sell it, the only the people in the formal sector can afford to buy it. If we insist on going it down, I think we will be held liable by the Commission on Audit. In 2022, the housing gap may reach up to 6.57 million housing units. Because of this, the newly established Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development may face challenges due to a small fund which amounts to only 3 billion pesos in the middle of 2019. Mataas ang expectations ng publiko sa Department of Human Settlements. Eh, ang baba pala nung budget. Senators expect that by the year 2020, the problem on housing will be addressed through bigger budget. The committee asked the HUDCC to submit their inventory of all available public lands in the country by November. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The newly appointed Acting Department of Agriculture Secretary vows to address food security issues in the country. He says he favors the enactment of the rice tariffication law. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Food security is now becoming the overarching goal of uh, agriculture. And food security again is defined as, you know, you, you create more wealth, 
you produce what can you can produce in the country and whatever is uh, the gap say presently 7% of our total rice requirement you need to import that so that's still ensuring food security this is one of the main goals of acting agriculture secretary william dar he adds that even the philippines rice self-sufficiency is still among his ambitions dar also believes the rice tarification law will boost local farmers competitiveness with the rice competitiveness and enhancement fund he argues the president has the power to increase rice tariff to protect production i believe and with proper implementation of the 10 billion uh, rice uh, enhancement, rice competitiveness enhancement fund, this will make a long, long way in making the rice farmer very competitive. The new official also cites the importance of boosting the irrigation program. He says the farmer's income may also be doubled in five years' time. There is build, build, build for uh, airports uh, and other infrastructure there must be build 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 for irrigation dar also says that outgoing agriculture secretary mani pinol performed his job well secretary pinol did his best the growth of agriculture uh, it could be better i have mentioned the growth of agriculture has been erratic for the last three years but uh, we still would like to believe that uh, Secretary Pinul did his best. William Dar was an acting officer in charge of the Department of Agriculture. He also serves as the presidential advisor on rural development during the term of former President Joseph Estrada less than two decades ago. He was also the former Director General of the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics from 1999 until 2004. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Molacanang condoles with the families and relatives of those who perished in sea mishaps in the Iloilo Strait due to extreme weather conditions. Three boats capsized at sea last weekend. The number of casualties may increase since some passengers remain missing. Molacanang says it is possible for the president to visit the wake of the fatalities. According to the palace, concerned government agencies must perform their duties well during calamities to prevent such mishaps. Meanwhile, we condole with the families of the victims that perished in those mishaps. Tropical storm Hana is still in the Philippine area of responsibility but has no direct effect on the country. At 3, 3 p.m. today, it was located at 845 kilometers east of Aparik, Cagayan. Hana is projected to move west-northwest at 10 kilometers per hour, heading towards northeast of tai Taiwan. It is less likely to make landfall in any part of the Philippines. Meanwhile, the cyclone intensifies the effect of the southwest monsoon in the country. Monsoon rains will be experienced in Zambales, Bataan, Cavite, Batangas, Mimaropa, and western Visayas. Scattered rain showers will also be experienced in Metro Manila, Ilocos Region, Cordillera Autonomous Region, Bicol, and the rest of Central Luzon, Calabarzon, and the Visayas. Cagayan Valley will also experience the same weather due to the effect of Hana's trough. The rest of the country will experience isolated thunderstorms. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar, and here are the headlines. Peter Jomel Advincula, the man claiming to be Bicoy, applies for state protection in relation to sedition charges against Vice President Lenny Robredo and opposition figures. Seven Negros Oriental mayors express support to possible martial law declaration in their province to quell violence. <laughs> Caloacan vendors group protest MMDA's clearing operations. Ban on pay parking takes effect in San Juan City. 
and learn how to protect your credit card from fraud. Caloacan City Mayor Oka Malapitan admits they find it hard to discipline vendors whose stalls occupy the sidewalk. The city government warned vendors their items will be confiscated if they do not cooperate. Joa Nano tells us why. This is the 8th day of the 60-day deadline the DILG gave Metro Manila mayors to clear public roads of obstructions. In Caloacan City, Mayor Oka Malapitan led the clearing operations together with the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority. Two barangay offices seated on the sidewalk were demolished. This is a small number compared to some 90 barangay offices that need to be dismantled as they obstruct traffic. But the clearing effort was greeted by irate vendors in Bagong Barrio Market. Apparently, their stalls occupy part of the sidewalk. Meanwhile, a barangay Kagawad, who allegedly went against the city government's clearing efforts last Saturday, is facing possible suspension. Barangay Councilman Jerry Legarda explains that he only defended his goods since selling is his family's bread and butter. Kabuhayan ko po yun eh. Hindi naman ako, hindi naman ako pumalag na para sawatahin yung programa ng gobyerno natin. Ang inaano ko lang, baka naman pwede. Eh nung hindi naman po pwede, Malaya naman po silang dinala nila. But the city mayor warns the public, including vendors, who will not comply with the policy. Kukumpiskahin na namin yung kanilang mga paninda. John Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Caloacan City. The city government of San Juan suspends all pay parking starting today, but problems were already encountered on the first day. Harleen Delgado tells us why. Mayor Francis Zamora and Metropolitan Manila Development Authority Chairman Danilo Lim personally inspected today the roads in San Juan City on the first day of implementation of Executive Order No. 7, which the city mayor signed last week. This was in accordance with order of the Department of the Interior and Local Government and the directive of President Duterte to reclaim all public roads within 60 days. But on day one, a businessman complained when he was issued a ticket for parking in front of a private establishment. He claims he's been leasing the parking slot for almost a year now, and the building administrator did not inform them about the new order. Now, why are we the ones being ticketed, wherein it should be the admin who should be talked to? My executive order, I gave to all the buildings. Yes, but they should have, they should have informed uh, all the tenants. Mayor Zamora said the city losses around 2.5 million pesos worth of revenues with the suspension of the city's pay parking. Yung perwisyong na uh, dudulot ito sa lahat ng motorista ng dumadaan, yung oras, yung gasolina, yung stress, na you're only talking about uh, a total of around 300 parking slots. The mayor added there are 4,000 parking slots available at the Green Hill Shopping Center that motorists can rent. The shopping mall will open 2,000 more slots for the coming holiday season. The city mayor plans to finish clearing up the roads of San Juan City earlier than the two-month period the DILG gave local chief executives in the metro. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, San Juan City. The camp of Peter Jomel Advincula hopes that Alias Bicoy will be accepted in the government's witness protection program. His legal counsel formally submitted an application today. My Bermudas will tell us why. According to attorney Larry Gadon, Peter Jomel Advincula's legal counsel, his client's life is in danger. Apparently, alias Bicoy is crashing against the big, influential personalities, he said. They want in the WPP as soon as possible as the preliminary investigation on inciting to sedition complaint lodged against the Vice President Lenny Robredo and several opposition members will start just four days from now. Ay, marami! Oh, oh. Marami siyang nare-receive na death threats kasi syempre, uh, uh, alam kasi nila yung cell number ni uh, Peter and alam nila yung emails, so talaga nakaka-receive siya. Eh, yung the usual na ano, yung mga mag-ingat ka, delikado buhay mo, yung mga... 
after posting bail for his cyber libel case, Bicoy was granted temporary liberty by the Quezon City Regional Trial Court. Advincula's camp plans to submit supplemental affidavit on August 9 to clarify the inconsistencies in his affidavits submitted to the PNP Criminal Investigation and Detection Group and the Justice Department. We are going to file, uh, uh, we might file a supplemental uh, affidavit to clarify some inconsistencies that uh, they are uh, saying. No? The OJ Secretary Minardo Guevara says they will carefully evaluate Bicoy's request as he must meet all legal requirements to be covered by the Witness Protection Program. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno recognizes a police patrolman who single-handedly ran after a snatcher at the Lagusnilad underpass. April Sinadoza reports why. This dashcam video footage, shared by netizen Gerald Dumasal, showing how police patrolman Jonathan Stanley Junisho recently ran after a snatcher at the Lagusnilad underpass has gone viral on social media. 33-year-old Angelo Galliar snatched a gold bracelet worth 5,000 pesos of 51-year-old victim Rinsenia Rafael, who reported the incident at the Manila City Hall. Galliar even went to ride an e-tricycle, but the policeman did not stop chasing him. Nagkanda kami ng police visibility sa area ng Manila City Hall. Ngayon, um, dahil nagkaroon po ng incident report doon na nagkaroon ng robbery snatching, Yung mayroong isang lalaki na kahinahinala na pagka nung i-approach ko na po yung tao na yun, bigla po siyang tumakbo. Nung pagtakbo niya po, mga 20 to 15 meters po yung layo niya sa akin, hinabol ko po yun. Tumalun pa po kami sa Lagun Sinidad po. During Monday's flag racing ceremony at the Bonifacio Shrine, Mayor Isko Moreno recognized Genisho for his act of bravery. Sa Maynila, nabawasan na naman tayo ng isang isnatcher. Dahan-dahan lang, mauubos din yan. Highly commendable. Uh, while we are fast in uh, punishing those who do illegal activities, we are also fast in uh, commending, uh, giving awards uh, to all those that uh, who are deserving sa aming uh, ranks. No? Meanwhile, the mayor presented the 35 arrested drug suspects in Baseco compound at the Manila City Hall. This comes after Mayor Isko Moreno gave one week to the Manila Police District and the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency to clear Baseco compound of illegal drugs and loose firearms. Out of 35 arrested, 35 buhay. We don't tolerate them. We don't like them. In our city, the capital of the country, I don't like them selling and using drugs in the city of Manila. According to him, airing barangay chairpersons must resign from their posts for failing to clean their area of garbage and illegal drugs. April Sinedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. As useful and convenient as they are, we often use credit cards when purchasing online more than cash. But to our surprise, we hear about somebody ending up becoming a victim of credit card fraud. Find out how to get protected against this unauthorized activity as Mon Hokson reports. Welcome back to Y News. An independent health advocate believes the Dengvaksha vaccine will not solve the dengue outbreak in the country. He insists the government has to study the vaccine further before using it again in their mass immunization program. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Hindi mo bibigay Dengvaksha kasi lamok ang problema. So tanggalin mo yung lamok. Yan ang dapat gawin lahat ngayon ng tao, maglinis ang kapaligiran. Dr. Anthony Liachon stands firm that one of the reasons why the number of dengue cases in the country rises is that the Philippines is considered as the dirtiest country in Asia because of too much trash collected and undisposed. No, kasi hindi siya silver bullet na life and death situation. Ang talagang kailangan natin, yung ginagawa ni Mayor Isko Moreno right now, yung paglilinis ng mga kalye, mga barangay, mga basura, kasi pabalik-balik na eh. 
The independent health advocate also says that the proposal of experts to use the Dengvaxia again in the country to prevent further increase in the number of dengue cases is unjust. He points out that Dengvaxia is not registered in the Philippines in the first place. He adds there's no clear proof that Dengvaxia can help an individual be free of dengue infection. Dengvaxia can be administered only on children 9 years old and above who had prior dengue infection. Uh, wag tayong padalos-dalos. Maraming masakit na lessons na natutunan tayo. And to rush this again into the market may, may actually hurt us again. At maraming maraming mga bata, 800,000 kids na nag-suffer in their families. Hindi ba natin ikukonsidera yon? Liachon calls on the government to study the proposal to use Dengvaxia vaccines again to prevent a repeat of the Dengvaxia controversy, which has affected the trust and belief of the public on the government's mass immunization programs. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. A lawmaker refiles the bill legalizing medical marijuana or cannabis in the lower house of Congress. Grace Casson details why. Isabella Representative Tony Pet Albano refiles a bill to legalize the medical use of marijuana or cannabis in the lower chamber. The lawmaker says he has placed safeguards to make sure that cannabis won't be abused. Such measures include providing cards to patients to control who are allowed to buy from centers to be created in different parts of the country. There are 22 countries in the world that have legalized the medical use of cannabis. But President Rodrigo Duterte has earlier stated that he will never legalize the use of medical marijuana in his term. For Gurley Mapa, whose daughter experienced seizure every minute because of epilepsy, medical cannabis will help ease her daughter's suffering. Sa isang minuto, ano, 30, 40, 50 seizures siya. Nakaabang ako lagi sa kanya kung, kung paghinga niya, dedere-derecho pa, o mapuputol na lang. While Shell Sampayo has a child with two more and hydrocephalus, and her youngest was diagnosed with cancer this year. My brain tumor siya affected yung motor skills niya. Blind siya, bedridden. They are just some of the Filipinos who wait the legalization of the medical use of marijuana, while some worry about the consequences of this move. Representative Albano has allayed such concerns. The quantity of uh, dispensation has to be recorded in PIDEA. DOH and the committee involved so that mawala yung pangamba ng mga tao that this will be abused. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. And for the news abroad, Hispanics living in the U.S. border city of El Paso, Texas, said they are concerned for their safety after a gunman opened fire in Walmart on Saturday, killing at least 20 people in a crime which authorities say may have been racially motivated. Monhok Son reports why. A four-page statement posted on 8chan, an online message board often used by extremists and believed to have been written by the El Paso massacre suspect, called the Walmart attack, a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. Federal authorities said they will seek the death penalty for the suspect, Patrick Crucius, 21, of Allen, Texas, and are treating it as a case of domestic terrorism. 55-year-old Efrain Diaz said he heard the gunman had targeted Mexicans because of racism or immigration. If the Mexicans respond in kind, there would be a war. I think people are crazy. The guy must be, I don't know, I don't know what he could have in his head to think those things. El Paso and Ciudad Juarez, together with the neighboring city of Las Cruces, New Mexico, form a metropolitan border area of some 2.5 million residents, constituting the largest bilingual binational population in North America. The Mexican government said seven Mexican nationals were among the 20 people killed in the shooting, and at least six others were among 26 wounded. 42-year-old Gabriela Aguirre has lived in the U.S. for decades. She said she believed racism was caused by ignorance and people should learn more about different cultures. We're worried about these kinds of people because maybe they don't know our cultures. 
We're peaceful people. We're not looking for problems with anyone. 24-year-old saleswoman Priscilla Flores said she is not just scared for herself, but fears that friends visiting from Mexico could be targeted just because of their heritage. I do feel somewhat unsafe to know that your friends come or one goes visit another country or one goes to visit another country and to know people want you dead just because you're different. Foreign Minister Marcelo Ebrard said that Mexico will take legal actions to protect its citizens in the United States. Ebrard said Mexico would also consider litigation that could lead to the extradition of the gunman. U.S. President Donald Trump said he had spoken to the FBI, Attorney General William Barr, and members of Congress about what can be done to prevent such violence. The carnage ranked as the eighth deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history after a 1984 shooting in San Isidro, California that claimed 21 lives. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. Indonesia's capital Jakarta and some neighboring provinces on Java Island have been hit by a major electricity outage after problems at the number of power stations on Java. Meanwhile, Iran has seized a foreign tanker suspected of carrying smuggled fuel in the Gulf. Here's Scott Dumaraos to tell us why. Iran has seized another foreign tanker in the Gulf, state media reports claim. Iranian forces seized the Iraqi ship for smuggling fuel for some Arab countries and detained seven sailors, according to the reports. Iraq's oil ministry has said it has no connection to the seized vessel and that it is working to gather information about it. The incident comes amid heightened tensions after the U.S. tightened sanctions on Iran's oil sector. in Indonesia. Power has been mostly restored to Indonesia's capital Jakarta and nearby cities 12 hours after a huge blackout began on Sunday. The outage hit tens of millions of people and Jakarta's newly opened metro system was evacuated. Mobile phone networks were also affected. The failure was caused by technical issues, state power company PLN said. Nearly 10 million people live in Jakarta and some 20 million in the surrounding cities. Outages also hit neighboring provinces, home to tens of millions more. In Russia, Russian police forcibly detained nearly 800 people attending a protest in Moscow on Saturday to demand free elections, including prominent activist Lyubov Sobol, after authorities warned the demonstration was illegal. The focus of protesters' anger is a prohibition on a number of opposition-minded candidates, some of whom are allies of jailed opposition politician Alexei Navalny, from taking part in a September election for Moscow City's legislature. That vote, though local, is seen as a dry run for a national parliamentary election in 2021. In Cambodia Nguyen Chia, a key leader in Cambodia's Khmer Rouge who was convicted of genocide last year, has died at the age of 93. Known as brother number two, Nguyen Chia was second only to the regime's leader Pol Pot during Khmer Rouge rule over Cambodia from 1975 to 1979. Up to 2 million people are thought to have died during the Khmer Rouge's four years in power. In 2018, a UN-backed court sentenced Nguyen Chia to life in prison. A spokesman for the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia confirmed that the 93-year-old had died in hospital. The cause of death was not announced. Kat Dumaraos, TV News and Rescue. After dominating the BMX Flatland National Triumph last April, three homegrown BMX freestyle riders stood out and have the honor to represent Team Philippines in the 30th Southeast Asian Games with the theme We Win as One. Here's why from Nina Armilio. Meet Renz, Alan, and Jose. They are three of our compatriots who are out on a mission to bring glory to the Philippines in the 30th Sea Games, which the country hosts this time around from November 30 to December 11, 2019. The BMX Freestyle Flatland Under Cycling will debut in this year's edition of the biennial event. 
training on their own and with help from the private sector, they enjoy, at the same time treat their sport with passion, just like any other athlete. Iwas sa mga bisyo, maganda yung binibigay niya. It can also help you handle patient's levels. They encourage the new generation who'd like to try this individual sport. Here are some trips and tricks these pro BMXers wish to impart. Kailangan step by step tayo. Basic ang pinaka unang uh, kailangan. Kailangan meron disiplina. Preparation, mental, physical at spiritual. Pag execute mo ng tricks, talagang focus ka. Kailangan lagi lang masaya. Enjoy mo lang yung ginagawa mo. These Filipino elite athletes hope to dominate the BMX freestyle scene with the full support of the entire Filipino people. Hey guys, to our fellow countrymen, please support us this upcoming SEA Games 2019. Uh, we're representing BMX Flatland. We need your support. Nina Armilio, UNCV News and Rescue, Philippines. A U.S. farmer has used his annual corn maze to send a message he hopes will help save lives. Mirasol Abugadil will tell us why. A farmer in Wisconsin who creates a corn maze every year has opted to try and prevent suicides in this year's creation. The maze includes the phrase, your life matters, and also contains the number for a suicide prevention line. And we've got the 800 number cut into the maze, so if anybody sees that number and they need to talk, they, they can talk. The giant message took four men around five hours to make. It's not the first time that John Govin has cut his corn maze for a good cause. His 2012 maze had a message about Alzheimer's, and in 2013, he supported the Wounded Warrior Project. However, suicide is an issue which has affected the former. We had a family member that chose to end his life, and on the way to the funeral this winter, we just decided we could have a corn maze. The maze doesn't open until September 21, but Govan says the family has gotten a huge positive response both online and in real life. They plan to donate some of the proceeds to several suicide prevention groups. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV, News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this August 5, 2019. On behalf of Angelo Castro III, I'm Alex Baltazar. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. The great majority of Hong Kong people are now in a state of great anxiety. Some of them do not know whether they could still take some forms of public transport, while others are right now being blocked on the way to work. The government will be resolute in maintaining law and order in Hong Kong and restoring confidence. Marami siyang nare-receive na death threats. Uh, alam kasi nila yung cell number ni uh, Peter and alam nila yung emails. So, talaga nakaka-receive siya. Uh, binibigyan natin ng assurance ng ating mga kababayan doon na ang uh, situation ng peace and order sa Negros Oriental ay under control at wala po dapat kabahala ang ating mga kababayan. Hindi mo bibigay din yung box siya kasi lamok ang problema. So tanggalin mo yung lamok. Yan ang dapat gawin lahat ngayon ng tao. Maglinis ang kapaligiran.